What up? I'm Trap Apelka. This is the Brave Snapma Blog. Where organized content release strategy is something no one has time for. This is a list of the five highest ceiling prospects in the Atlanta Braves organization. The content on this channel is about 85 to 90% centered around the Braves mostly around transactions. I talk a good bit about the prospects on this channel. It's not something I ever fancy myself as an expert in, not because I don't watch them, know who all they are, and you know want to know what they're up to. It's just because I'm not a scout, and that's something that I've been very you know vocal about on this channel. But the subscribers are very vocal uh, you know, about what they want to hear about, and very reasonably, it's about the prospects. And that's for very good reason. Anyone who's a diehard fan of the Atlanta Braves knows to watch the farm system better than the major league team because you know, one is good and the other isn't. And a lot of times I see disagreements in the comments section, which is the best for me, uh, you know, about how highly we view certain players, certain young guys that, you know, there's some guys that if you mentioned trading, I just see a bunch of comments going, no, don't even talk about that. So I'm doing something I do a lot on this channel. I'm making a top five. This is the top five of the highest ceiling players in the organization. Now, again, something I was always very vocal about is that I don't know more than many of my viewers. My opinion is not better than any of theirs. Thus, feel free to comment, critique my list, or give your own top five highest ceilings list. Some small caveats, bear in mind that a prospect is someone who has not used up their rookie eligibility at the major leagues. So with that in mind, Dansby Swanson is fair game, Mike fulton is not. With that, I will get into my top five highest ceilings in the Braves farm system. Number five, Joey Wentz. Honestly, this was the hardest one to put on the list. I tore myself up over who to put in the number five spot because it was the three pitchers that we drafted this year. We all love all three, and it was extremely hard to choose one. Honestly, all three have been really good, and Joey Wentz has actually been the worst of the three. Kyle Muller has actually been the best. But as far as upside, I went with Wentz because I think that he has the best three-pitch mix of the three pitchers. First of all, all three of these guys are above 6'3". Joey Wentz is 6'5", 210 pounds. I think that he might be the slowest to develop of those three guys. But the best news is, is that no one in baseball knows how to take their time with high upside pitching than the Braves. The fact that he's a lefty and the fact that his motion is so projectable gave me the edge for him. Now, the truth is, I have no idea how he's going to develop. I have no idea how any of them are going to develop, but it's going to be really exciting. And eventually, I think as Braves fans, we might learn to just talk about one of these pitchers and not all three of them at the same time. Number four, Sean Newcomb. Sean Newcomb has a ridiculously high ceiling. That's been said time and time again. You've heard it over and over since he got traded to the Braves. I would get used to it. It's not about to change. Well, he should be big league ready, and he's not. Yeah, the thing is, with pitchers like this that can throw 97, that have a disgusting curveball like he has, that are big and projectable, all you can do is wait until he gets his command figured out. Here's the thing. He's worth it. He's shown the ability to make adjustments. He's shown the ability to be coached. He needs one thing. He needs to learn control. And once he learns control, he can be a frontline starter quickly. It's his fastball and curveball combination. MLB.com rated his fastball as 70 grade. They rated his curveball as 60 grade. Of course, they rated his control as 45. He's frequently compared to John Lester for his size, left-handed, very similar delivery. I would like to see him develop a bit like Jake Arrieta, where he has the disgusting stuff. If he can find a new way to mix his pitches, you know, later in his career, maybe adds a cutter or something like that, he could be disgusting. Number three, Colby Allard. It's hard to put Allard ahead of Newcomb because I just described all of the reasons that Newcomb can be amazing. I think he can. I can't guarantee it. You know, and I certainly can't guarantee that it'll be anytime soon. I fully expect that bearing injury, that we can see Colby Allard develop quickly and develop into a frontline starter. He does not have Newcomb's fastball. Its fastball sits around 90-94. He does have an absurd curveball. That's his best pitch. And from everything we've seen from Allard, you know, I think it's safe to say that he'll develop it even further. Allard is young. He has a great feel for pitching. He's able to control his pitches very well. You can't expect him to make a Julio Urias type rise to the big leagues. He still needs to develop slowly like all of our other high school pitchers. You need him to take his time. But he is the type of guy that when I see him getting to the majors, I see him moving to the front of a rotation quickly. It's funny, though, in a farm system with so much high-end left-handed talent, Allard is the easiest one for me to forget about. And because of Allard's ability and approach, it's easy for me to forget about Mike Soroka, who's at the same level as him and perhaps pitching even better. Number two, Tookie Toussaint. I have read your comments, so I know that you all love Tookie Toussaint. I also love Tookie Toussaint. He is 20 years old. He is four months older than me, which makes him 
the second oldest player on this list. That being said, he just completed a full season at Rome. He is still a long way from the major leagues. I got into keeping up with player development when I was about 16 years old, which means that I've been, you know, watching players develop for four years, not that long. I've never seen the hype around anyone like it is around Tookie. People light up when they talk about Tookie because it's absurd to think about how devastating he could be with the curveball like he has and the fastball in the mid 90s. If there's anyone that the Braves should never ever ever involve in trade discussions, it is Tookie Toussaint because if there were an award given out every year for most likely to Jake Arrieta, the Braves, it would be Tuki Toussaint. The upside on him is, is just, I can't even describe it, with just an earth-shattering curveball, a fastball in the upper 90s, which he is learning to control, and a changeup, which he's developing into an average pitch. Number one, Kevin Maiton. At long last, we have a player who is not a pitcher make the list. Word to Dansby Swanson and Ozzy Alves. I still love you guys. That's really difficult to do in the Braves farm system because pitchers naturally have higher ceilings than hitters do, and the Braves have so much high upside pitching. So why does Kevin Maiton deserve the title of the Braves' highest ceiling prospect. One word, 16. He is 16 years old. I don't even think my demographic said I had a subscriber under 16 years old. Kevin Maiton is 16 years old, and I know I talk about that all the time. I know the last time I talked about Maiton on this channel, all I said was that he's 16. That's all I'm saying now, but it's significant to me because MLB.com rated him as the 96th best overall prospect in baseball before he's ever gotten to America, and he's 16. Bear with me, because like I said, these rankings are basically based on numbers. The only number I have on him is 16 years old, and the amount that we signed him for, which is a lot, but he is clearly the best talent that the Braves have acquired in a long, 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 long time. I was reading that as good as his arm is, his arm is better than his range is, he's 6'2". He's 6'2", and keep in mind he's 16, so he has a lot of growing left to do. He profiles more as a third baseman in the future than a shortstop. Bear with me. There is a possibility of a Braves infield made up of Freddie Freeman, Ozzie Albies, Dansby Swanson, and Kevin Maiton. And I know I'm going to get a bunch of comments going, what about Austin Riley? I know, I know, but it's not absurd to say that that could be the case. I know all the time I'm calming the Kevin Maiton hype train. Right now I'm hyping it up because I'm talking about ceilings and the ceilings is like way off the camera, but I, I don't know. He, he's amazing. Other than that, you guys are the best for keeping up all season. It's coming to an end, and I haven't really had time to comprehend it. The Turner Field's coming to a close. How are you guys feeling? You know, maybe it'll make me feel something. I'm Chef Apelka. This is the Braves Time Blog. It's a YouTube channel dedicated to talking about the Braves and baseball in general. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the channel, see if it's for you. I hope you enjoyed, and go Braves.